This is Heart Rhythm TV, day four, Heart Rhythm 2025, San Diego, late breaking clinical trials, standing room only. I'm here with friend and colleague, Dr. Roderick Chung. Welcome to the studio. Um, okay, so. Studio looks great. Yeah. Studio looks great. Studio looks great. 2022. Yep. Still holding up here. Yeah. 2022, you gave us some information about the safety, efficacy, and feasibility of compassionate use for cardioneural ablation functional bradycardia and syncope, vasovagal syncope. Um, 15 centers in the United States, over 200, I think 205 patients to be exact. Mm -hmm. And today you delivered an update. So can you tell our uh, viewers sure. a little bit about what's going on? Well, you know, all of the series of this cardioneural ablation, which is, yes, trying to rewire the nerves of the heart to counterbalance some of these excessive vagotonic episodes, you know, so excessive vagotonia could happen with basal gyrus reflex, et cetera. But these patients, most importantly, can be very desperate. You know, everyone will always send you this like, oh, I've got this young patient that's got these long pauses. They go 12 seconds asystolic on the, on the tilt or whatever. And then you see it on the ILR and it's scary. And typically people don't want to be putting pacemakers in. And that's why there's a place for this. And clearly over 200 times people think that's, there's a place for that in this multi-center. It is the largest um, ever experience reported. A lot of this data came from Brazil, then went to China, then Turkey, and then now it's fun to represent the U.S. with this multi-center effort, 15 centers. Most importantly, it's very heterogeneous, but amongst the patients with syncope, we were able to get 78% of them free of recurrent syncope, and the median episodes were seven before to zero. So this is not first-time syncope. This is not one episode. It's not asymptomatic. We want careful selection of the patient, but it gives promise to people that are suffering. Correct. I mean, this is something we all deal with. We all get that look from our partners, our non-EP partners, where we're like, yeah, it's 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 concerning, but I'm not putting a pacemaker in. And they get a little unnerved. So it's great to have another option for patients. Um, obviously, big registry, gaining kind of traction. We need to go with some type of randomized data here in the future. I'm sure you'll have a hand in it. So look forward to where that's going. But where do you think we need to be moving towards as like a society for re reproducing results, um, standardization of the procedure. Because as you said, there's a lot of heterogeneity in patients mm -hmm. and probably in how the procedure is being done. Right. I, I mean, Henry Huang's initiating a prospective global registry. So I think we do need that. Mina Chung, our Madam President, wants to see more HRS sponsored, um, large data sets and cohorts. So this would be a great heart rhythm CNA. Just pitching that right now. Uh, clearly, we need a trial, a randomized controlled trial. Question is whether it should be sham or not. I think it should be just so we could be three chess pieces ahead, mm -hmm. chess moves ahead, so we don't get all that criticism. Oh, it's not sham, but you could try to see, think of an EP study. Most importantly, this is an invasive intervention, and it's not without complications. Correct. You know, there was a 4% risk of complications, and in a young patient, you don't want that either. And anything where you get into the left atrium and a transeptal, you know, you do have risks, and there were two hemopericardiums mm -hmm. that had to be drained. There was also some sinus node dysfunction, probably maybe sinoatrial node damage with ablating around the SBC aortic. So we've got to make sure that these are safe. We have to make sure right now that when they're being done and they're off-label and they're compassionate, there's a very careful discussion with shared decision-making with the patient. Correct, correct. And I think there's actually some, some growing um, space for imaging here too to help us sure. kind of find those right and fine tune our our, our uh, approach to try to minimize those uh, you know right. where to ablate possible. how much to ablate correct we don't really know but on average we're not ablating more than ten or fifteen minutes so it's really nice to be able to see that we've got a brand new procedure and I like to call it non arrhythmic ablation we're not ablating an arrhythmia right and that's exciting it's very that's exciting. very exciting very exciting so I mean. No, look, everybody's really excited about cardioneuroblation. I'm going to try to get you to use your crystal ball. Where do you think we need to be in the next five, 10 years with cardioneuroblation? Well, I mean, everything you want to do, you want it to move clinical practice. Um, that's where you have the greatest impact. So we need to get it to like a level one where it would be either acceptable as a first line therapy in those that are medically refractory, just like AFib ablation, those who do not desire, tolerate, right, or wish to be on AAD. Mm -hmm. And obviously there aren't really great drugs for this, maybe Midodrin, um, some Florinef. So I think getting it to be even a first line is where we want that in five or 10 years. Um, Got to get it safer. 
got to show the randomized evidence, got to be level A. And Piotrowski, and it's a shout out to Roman Piotrowski who passed away suddenly, but he did the first randomized trial, you know, in just 40 some patients, but showed very similar about 80% success rate. Yeah. And then the criticism was, well, it's not sham controlled. So since he's done that, we need to get larger and we'll be pitching that around and figuring out who might support that. Maybe PCORI would support that with the patient centered outcomes research mm -hmm. uh, initiative. I think that's where that needs to go. Yeah. I think it's great. I think we're all excited. Can't wait to see where we go from here. So thank you again for joining us. Our viewers will love to, to hear about your perspective and where we think we need to go. So with that being said, remember to like and subscribe below. You can find more content like this on YouTube, X, and LinkedIn.